do you know how electricity works electricity is the flow of energy flow of electrons from one place to another or from one point to another point it requires a source of power usually a generating station a flow of electrons is called current current travels through a conductor and remember it travels in a closed circuit this is an example of on the right hand side closed circuit this is a conductor from where the current is flowing and this is the load and this area where the positive and negative terminal this is the power generating station so this is the easiest and a simple example of a closed circuit dear friends and colleagues accidental or unexpected starting of electrical equipment can cause injury or death before any inspections or repairs are made the current must be turned off at the switch box and the switch pad lock in the off position at the same time the switch or controls of the machine or other equipment being locked out of service must be securely tagged to show which equipment or circuits are being worked on employees shall be trained in and familiar with the safety related work practices that pertain to their respective job assignments and don't forget you will get an electrical shock if you touch both wires of an electrical circuit one wire of an energized circuit and ground part of a machine which is hot because it is contacting an energized wire and the ground so this is the way how you will receive an electrical shock once you will make an accidental or deliberate contact with a live electrical circuit hey this is javed you are on the platform of safety first life today i'm discussing about dangers of electricity and how you can control and maintain electrical safety at work if you are new on this channel kindly subscribe safety first life and press the bell icon and if you find the video informative then like comment and share it with your friends and colleagues let us start with the main electrical hazards what are the primary hazards of electricity and what are the secondary hazards the primary hazards of electricity are shock burns arc blast fires and explosions while the secondary hazard might be a fall dear friends and colleagues let us dig deeper let us try to understand why we receive electrical shock fires explosions arcing or burns there are three main reasons number one unsafe equipment or insulations number two workplace made unsafe by the environment and number three unsafe work practices the major reasons for receiving electrical shock might be overhead power lines buried or underground electrical lines defective cords and wires wet weather conditions improper or no grounding exposed electrical parts in adequate wiring damaged insulation overloaded circuits damaged tools and equipment due to the absence or non functionality of electrical safety devices or maybe because of using wrong personal protective equipment or unsafe tools there are some common terms usually used at sight let us understand these terms in a shortest possible way what is a current movement of electrons through the conductor it is measured in amps amperes what is voltage a measurement of electrical force what is the meaning of resistance restriction to the flow of electrons what is the meaning of circuit a complete path of the current includes electrical source 
a conductor and the output device or load such as a lamp tool or a heater what is the meaning of conductor substances like metals with little resistance to electricity that allow electricity to flow what are insulators substances with high resistance to electricity like glass porcelain plastic and dry wood that prevent electricity from getting to unwanted areas another important term is grounding a conductive connection to the earth which acts as a protective measure dear friends and colleagues resistance is measured in ohms remember four factors determine the resistance of a material to the flow of electricity number 1 what it is made of silver is best copper is most common number 2 its diameter smaller diameter is equal to more resistance its temperature higher temperature is equal to higher resistance and number 4 its length longer is equal to higher resistance these are the vital points you have to keep them in your mind all the time while you are at work as i told you an electrical shock is received when electrical current passes through the body you will get an electric shock if a part of your body completes an electrical circuit by touching a live wire and an electrical ground or touching a live wire and another wire at a different voltage you have to remember electricity travels in closed circuits and its normal route is through a conductor electric shock occurs when the body becomes a part of the circuit yet the question is how to avoid the shock grounding is a physical connection to the earth which is at zero volts the metal parts of electrical tools and machines may becomes energized if there is a break in the insulation of the tool or machine wiring a worker using these tools and machines is made less vulnerable to electric shock when there is a low resistance path from the metallic case of the tool or machine to the ground this is done through the use of an equipment grounding conductor a low resistance wire that causes the unwanted current to pass directly to the ground thereby greatly reducing the amount of electrical current passing through the body of the person in contact with the tool or machine dear friends and colleagues don't take any chances with electricity one mistake can cost you your own life and remember severity of the shock depends on number 1 path of current to the body number 2 amount of current flowing through the body number 3 duration of the shocking current through the body low voltage doesn't mean low hazard or no danger there are some other factors that may affect the severity of shock the voltage of the current the presence of moisture the general health of the person prior to the shock remember low voltages can be extremely dangerous because all other factors being equal the degree of injury increases the longer the body is in contact with the circuit do you know the resistance of the body varies based on number 1 the amount of the moisture on the skin less moisture is equal to more resistance more safety number 2 the size of the area of contact smaller area equal to more resistance number 3 the pressure applied to the contact point less pressure is equal to more resistance and number 4 muscular structure less muscle is equal to less resistance have a look on the right hand side this person is electrocuted this is the point from where the current is entering the body and this is the way the current is flowing through the body this is the exit point this is the way how the electrical current passes or travels through the body and you can easily imagine how dangerous the flow of electrical current through the body dear friends 
and fellows. You are on the platform of safety. First slide. We were discussing about the dangers or hazards of electricity. Let us discuss now how to prevent electrical hazards. We'll start with planning. If you are interested to avoid electrical shock, you have to remember or memorize few important points. Number one, plan your work with others. Number two, plan to avoid falls. Number three, plan to lock out and tag out equipment. Number four, remove jewelry while you are going to start working. And number five, avoid wet conditions and overhead power lines. You can make your environment safer by doing lock and tag out circuits and machines to prevent overloaded wiring by using the right size and type of wire to prevent exposure to live electrical parts by isolating them, to prevent exposure to live wires and parts by using insulation, to prevent shocking currents from electrical systems and tools by grounding them, prevent shocking currents by using ground fault circuit interrupters, GFCI, and prevent too much current in circuits by using current protection devices. These are the tips and tricks how you can avoid, how you can prevent electrical shock while you are working on site as an electrician. Let us discuss few safety related best work practices. To protect workers from electrical shock, use barriers and guards to prevent passage through areas of exposed energized equipment. And this is an example of barrier or guards to access to energized equipment. Pre-plan work, post hazard warnings and use protective measures. Keep working spaces and walkways clear of cords. Employees must not work near any part of an electric power circuit that the employee could contact in the course of work unless the employee is protected against electric shock by de-energizing the circuit and grounding it or by guarding it effectively by insulation or other means. In work areas where the exact location of underground electrical power lines is unknown, employees using jackhammers, bars or other hand tools which may contact a line shall be provided with the insulated protective gloves. Before work is begun, inquire or observe by instruments whether any part of an energized electrical power circuit is so located that the performance of work may bring any person, tool or machine into physical or electrical contact with the electric power circuit. Post and maintain proper warning signs where such a circuit exists. The employer shall advise employees of the location of such lines, the hazards involved, and the protective measures to be taken. Dear friends and colleagues, we are talking about safety-related best work practices. You have to use special insulated tools when working on fuses with energized terminals. Don't use worn or frayed cards and cables. Don't fasten extension cards with staples, hang from nails or suspend by wire. Have a look on the right hand side. This is an example of damaged frayed card. Remember, only qualified, competent and trained persons may work on electrical circuits or equipment that have not been de-energized. Such persons shall be capable of working safely on energized circuits and shall be familiar with the proper use of special precautionary techniques, personal protective equipment, insulating and shielding materials, and insulated tools. You have to try your best to de-energize live parts that an employee may be exposed to before the employee work on or near them, unless the employer can demonstrate 
that de-energizing introduces additional or increased hazards or is infeasible due to equipment design or operational limitations. Live parts that operate at less than 50 volts need not be de-energized if there will be no increased exposure to electrical burns or to explosion due to electric arcs. If the exposed live parts are not de-energized, other safety-related work practices shall be used to protect employees who may be exposed to the electrical hazards. Employees must be protected against contact with energized circuits with any part of their body or indirectly through some other conductive object, lock or tag out, or both the circuits energizing the parts while any employee is exposed to contact with parts of fixed electrical equipment or circuits which have been de-energized. If working near overhead lines, the lines shall be de-energized and grounded or other protective measures shall be provided before work is started. Portable cord and plug connected equipment and extension cards shall be visually inspected before use on any shift for external defects such as loose parts, deformed and missing pins or damage to outer jacket or insulation and for evidence of possible internal damage such as pinched or crushed outer jacket. Dear friends and colleagues, wandering on the site is not the responsibility of HSC officers. They have to ensure all these points and they have to check the site if they are interested to maintain electrical safety at their construction site. And this is not only the responsibility of HSC officers or inspectors, it is the responsibility of site supervisor and especially the electrical staff, maybe electrical foremen, electricians or electrical engineer. They have to work as a team and they have to identify all these dangers and they have to rectify them prior to it converted to an electrical incident or accident at their project site. One most important thing is you have to avoid wet conditions. If you touch a live wire or other electrical component while standing in even a small puddle of water, you will get a shock. Damaged insulation, equipment or tools can expose you to live electrical parts. Improperly grounded metal switch plates and ceiling lights are especially hazardous in wet conditions. Wet clothing, high humidity and perspiration increase your chances of being electrocuted. A damaged tool may not be grounded properly, so the housing of the tool may be energized, causing you to receive a shock. You are more likely to receive a shock when standing in water. But remember, you don't have to be standing in water to be electrocuted. Wet clothing, high humidity, and perspiration also increase your chances of being electrocuted. Use extra caution when working with electricity, when water is present in the environment or on the skin. Pure water is a poor conductor, but small amounts of impurities like salt and acid, both are in perspiration, make it a ready conductor. Dear friends and colleagues, we are on the platform of safety. First slide. Today we are discussing about the dangers of electricity. Do you know? how electrical hazards can be prevented by using personal protective equipment. Once you are on electrical circuit, you need proper foot protection, not tennis shoes, rubber insulating gloves, hoods, sleeves, matting and blankets, hard hat. It must be insulated and non-conductive. Remember, you have to use store and maintain your electrical PPE, personal protective equipment in a safe and reliable condition. You have to wear protective equipment for the eyes or face wherever there is a danger of injury to the eyes or face. But you will not forget personal protective equipment should always be the last line of defense 
against a hazard if the hazard is unavoidable and cannot be addressed in any other safe manner then employees must fit it with proper personal protective equipment safety shoes should be non conductive and protect your feet from completing an electrical circuit to ground they can also protect against open circuits of up to 600 volts in dry conditions these shoes should be used with other insulating equipment and in connection with active precautions to reduce or eliminate the potential for providing a path for hazardous electrical energy when it is necessary to handle a come close to wires with the potential live electrical charge it is essential to use proper insulating ppe to protect employees from contact with the hazardous electrical energy and remember specific types of hard hats are needed when performing electrical work a class b electrical utility type hard hat protects against falling objects and high voltage shock and burns usually the contractor or the employer they are not giving non conductive electrically safe personal protective equipment the electricians and the electrical staff are using the casual personal protective equipment that has been given to general laborers those are engaged in earthwork so it is the responsibility of electrical engineer or supervisor to provide safe and non conductive electrical personal protective equipment to their staff and employees you have to remember you can prevent electrical hazards by proper wiring and connectors use and test gfcis check switches and insulation use three prong plugs use extension cords only when necessary and assure in proper condition and right type for job and you have to use correct connectors if the polarity is reversed on a gfci the light will test good but the press to test button will not trip the circuit and this is the indication that you have to reverse the polarity dear friends and colleagues there are some precautions required for working on or with energized parts of the electrical circuit or equipment persons working on energized equipment must be familiar with the proper use of special precautionary techniques personal protective equipment insulating and shielding materials and insulated tools when working on energized circuits isolate the area from all traffic post signs and barricades use an attendant if necessary use insulated tool mats and sheeting and use electrical rubber sheeting to cover nearby exposed circuits conductive materials and equipment must be handled so as to prevent them from contacting exposed energized conductors or circuit parts you have to remove all conductive articles of jewelry and clothing bracelets rings keychains necklaces metalized aprons cloth with conductive thread or metal headgear dear friends and colleagues these are important points smaller points but with higher impact if you will not take care while you are on an energized electrical circuit dear friends and colleagues let us discuss and understand few clues that indicates electrical hazards are existing in the workplace these indications might be tripped circuit breakers or blown fuses warm tools wires cords or connections or junction boxes gfci ground fault circuit interrupter that shuts off a circuit worn or frayed insulation around wire or connection if you find or identify any of these points it means there is electrical danger and you have to ensure the safe electrical working procedure training is very important we are in the training session 
training is for awareness knowledge information and for safe work practices as a safety practitioner as an electrical engineer as a project manager it is your responsibility to train employees working with electrical equipment in safe work practices it includes de-energizing electrical equipment before inspecting or making repairs using electric tools that are in good repair or good condition using good judgment when working near energized lines using appropriate and non conductive personal protective equipment electrical work shall be carried out only by authorized employees and once you are conducting a training for electricians it must cover safe electrical work practices how to isolate electrical sources how to test electrical equipment how to use and inspect electrical tools safely and the personal protective equipment this is a minimum training requirement for electricians are those who have to work on electrical circuits or equipment dear friends and colleagues if you like to avoid electrical accident if you like to avoid electrical burns if you like to avoid electrical shock if you like to avoid electrical fires and explosion then it's your job to know the hazards of electricity know the equipment use safe work practices inspect your personal protective equipment before each use and don't work on energized circuits without permission and authorization by your electrical supervisor or electrical engineer at site and do you know why you have to maintain and implement electrical safety at work because it's the matter of your own life the life of your friends and colleagues electricity can kill you or your best friend within 2 seconds so remember this reality and maintain electrical safety and that's all for today planning session related to the dangers of electricity and how to prevent electrical hazards is over now if you have any question please ask in the comment section down below thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video with your friends and colleagues hope to see you soon with a new hsc tutorial till then take care good luck and allah hafiz